Uh, good afternoon um, and welcome um, to the GCSE 2012 reforms going linear. Uh, information on the changes for GCSE Chinese, Italian and Urdu. Uh, first of all, I'd like to begin this session with a quick overview of a series of generic slides and how they will impact on first teaching from September 2012. Uh, later on in the session, I shall be focusing specifically on GCSE, uh, Chinese, Italian and Urdu specific slides which hopefully, as there are less changes for languages than in other subjects areas, uh, you will find useful and reassuring. As explained at the, end of the quest, at, the, at the end of this session, there will be plenty of opportunity for you to type in questions that are related to the GCSE 2012 reforms. Okay, uh, I think we'll get started then and have a look at the first slide. So what are the GCSE reforms? Okay, the reforms uh, result from uh, various changes that Ofqual have confirmed. And we're going to really focus, first of all, on the first bullet, um, because it's all about going linear in structure. In other words, that means that the examinations will now have to take place at the end of the GCSE course. At the moment, there is the facility for students to undertake uh, assessments, uh, maybe in year 10, and then do some other assessments at the end of year 11. With the new linear GCSE for first teaching from 2012, this will no longer be possible. All of the examinations will have to take place at the end of the two-year course. That will be slightly different for the controlled assessments, that will, there will be more on that later. Okay, the second bullet. Uh, this affects two-year courses starting from September 2012. But for those of you who may be delivering the curriculum a little bit more flexibly and maybe have started a three-year GCSE course already, maybe in September 2011, then it's important for you to be aware that the 2012 GCSE reforms will also impact on you. Basically, they will affect all qualifications uh, taken and awarded in summer 2014. Okay, the third bullet isn't actually appropriate because that relates to various subjects such as English literature, religious studies, history and geography, where there are specific additional marks for English language spelling, punctuation and grammar. Those specific additional marks do not apply to GCSEs in Chinese Urdu or Italian. Okay, the next three bullets, the final three bullets on this slide are pretty crucial. Units cannot be reset before cash-in. At the moment, uh, you could enter students maybe for listening in year 10, and if they don't do as well as you'd hoped, they could resit that unit uh, later on, maybe in year 11 that individual reset facility will no longer uh, be a feature of the 2012 GCSE reformed qualifications. Examinations will only be available in the summer series. That's actually minimum change because it's only really for GCSEs in French, German and Spanish where there has been a January option for the controlled assessments. The final bullet is really important because it concerns controlled assessments. Now the controlled assessments can still be conducted at any time during your GCSE program, but they can only be submitted at the end of the course. So in other words, you would submit the work for the writing and the speaking uh, by the May the 15th uh, deadline. Okay, let's have a look at the next slide. You'll notice that this slide contains a great deal of information. 
Uh, it's still being pop animated now with various details. I'm not actually going to spend too much time on this slide. It, it's quite complex and overly detailed as it relates to all subject areas. You'll notice that there are um, certainly in this information there's certainly to do with November and January and March windows that, that don't really apply to any of these qualifications. Later on, I will refer to a similar timeline grid that is specific to GCSE languages. Uh, but nonetheless, you may find that slide uh, use, a useful reference point. OK. Minimum change, or minimal change to the specifications. This first bullet is extremely important. Um, in terms of the subject content, the specifications will remain unchanged. Really, in terms of the GCSE linear reform, uh, the impact has uh, the impact really takes place on the when. It doesn't really affect the how or the what. So essentially, we're looking at assessments being submitted or being undertaken in the case of the examinations at the end of the GCSE course. So for those students starting in September 2012 over two years, clearly that will relate to summer 2014. Okay, as intimated uh, in the second bullet. Okay, the third bullet doesn't really apply because of all of the exams for languages, certainly for Chinese, Urdu and Italian, uh, will take place uh, in the May-June window. OK, I'm going to bypass this slide, as you can see, because it relates to the additional marks for spelling, punctuation and grammar. Now, that really impacts only on English language and only in certain subject areas, such as English literature, geography, history and religious studies. However, it's a useful opportunity for me to confirm and perhaps to, to reassure you that clearly marks will still be applied for knowledge and application or range of language and indeed accuracy in both the writing and speaking units for GCSEs in Chinese, Urdu and Italian. And obviously these will be in line with the existing assessment criteria that we currently have. OK, so let's move on to the next slide. OK, just to reiterate uh, that there are no changes to content in terms of the controlled assessments as well. Um, you can timetable these at your discretion. So if, for example, um, you wish to take, uh, to take students through controlled assessments in year 10, if you believe that they're ready then, then if that's what you wish to do, then you can continue to enter students, uh, sorry, to undertake controlled assessments in year 10, and then maybe have additional controlled assessments in year 11, and then send the best ones through to us, either for moderation or for marking, dependent on whether they're writing or speaking, uh, at the end of their two-year GCSE course, or the end of their three-year GCSE course, as is appropriate. So just to reiterate that it's you can take the uh, controlled assessments uh, when you wish, but the marks or the submissions can only be made at the end of the GCSE course. It is indeed still possible for you to undertake more than two controlled assessments uh, and then select the best ones. So that option is still available to you. The third bullet is again is very important. Uh, controlled assessment unit results can indeed be carried forward if a student wishes to retake the whole qualification. If a student is unsuccessful uh, in 
2014, in summer 2014, with their grade and want to reset the qualification, that is indeed what they will have to do. They cannot just reset a particular unit going forwards. However, with the controlled assessments, uh, it may be possible to, con uh, to carry forward the controlled assessment results. That is if the student or the centre wishes that to, to take place. Otherwise, it may well be that the student wishes to reset the controlled assessment units because it may well be that the controlled assessment units are the areas where the student wants to make most improvement. The facility to carry forward controlled assessment results within um, the reset of a new qualification, of a whole qualification, is actually quite important because the controlled assessments, of course, still count for a significant amount of the qualification. 30% for the speaking, 30% for the writing, so a significant 60% of the qualification. And obviously you would need to make sure that when undertaking the controlled assessments that you're using the correct tasks um, that have been set for that particular period. Okay, um, looking now at another slide. Which again reiterates the point made earlier that students are not able to carry forward unit results from one session to another unless, as it states in B, uh, that they are controlled assessment results. Okay, um, A does not really apply to Chinese, Italian or Urdu. Uh, that normally relates to uh, qualifications where there are double awards and uh, different subject areas. Okay, so let's have a look at um, a summary of some of these uh, reforms and what the impact will be in terms of reporting. So, from 2014, um, the school performance tables will continue to include uh, reporting on five or more a star to C grade GCSEs, including English and Maths, and obviously uh, a GCSE result in uh, Chinese, Urdu or Italian uh, can count towards that. All qualifications uh, will, regardless of size, count as the equivalent of one GCSE. Obviously a short course GCSE would not, that's only half a GCSE. Information there about vocational and academic qualifications not relevant really for this particular event. Uh, what is perhaps important to mention is that new Edexcel certificates have been uh, approved uh, by Ofqual recently and accredited uh, in French, German, Spanish and Chinese and these offer another key stage for alternative to GCSE. More uh, information is, is available about these on our website. Uh, they offer a different accreditation route and offer a 100% um, terminal examination format. There are no controlled assessments for those. The final bullet relates to EBAC, the English Baccalaureate. Uh, an important new uh, measure uh, that uh, looks at schools reporting on successes at grade C and above in English, maths, history, geography, science and indeed languages and many teachers have, have spoken to me about how it has helped the status of languages within their school. So um, the new uh, revised linear GCSEs 2012 will still of course contribute to the English back, the EBAC um, reporting. Okay, uh, the next slides are actually the slides that, that I've put together myself, they're the nitty gritty uh, language specific ones and I hope um, that uh, you'll find these useful. Indeed they should really confirm very much much of the information that I've already provided and, and hopefully consolidate on that. Um, and 
uh, let's have a look at the first bullet. Minimal change for most language teachers. That really is quite clear. When I've been talking to teachers, uh, it's clear that these changes for most teachers would appear to have little impact. It's quite clear um, that many teachers are entering uh, students for examinations and indeed uh, undertaking controlled assessments uh, towards the end of, of year 11 or certainly towards the end of their GCSE course as that gives them time to, to progress really. So I think that's, that's uh, an important um, consideration. So hopefully for many of you this will mean minimum change. The changes affect students taking examinations in summer 2014 uh, onwards. Um, and it's important perhaps to, st to stress that it's not possible for you to submit individual units prior to this date prior to this date if any of your students are looking for accreditation in summer 2014. So uh, just to recap that if they did start a three-year course in September uh, of 2011, then the linear GCSE will impact on them as well. Okay, the linear approach to assessment ensures that all examinations are taken at the end of the course. As I stated earlier, in terms of the controlled assessments, they can be done at any convenient time for you. So they can be done, if appropriate, maybe in year 10. Um, they can be done um, in the autumn or, or, the, sp or the spring term. No individual resets of um, individual units. Again, that's, that's crucial. It's a crucial element of the new changes. Something I've not mentioned, and I think is quite important, is that you will be aware of the fact that for GCSE Italian, Chinese and Urdu, we do offer short course variants. Now the short courses we offer are a GCSE short course uh, in oral communication, which includes speaking and listening. We also offer another two unit short course, which is written communication. Um, now that written communication uh, short course would clearly involve reading and writing. Now in the past, or, or indeed currently, it's possible for you to combine those two short courses to form a full course. However, with the new linear GCSE model, that will no longer be the case. Okay, let's move on then to the next slide. So, hopefully for many of you, there'll be a great deal of continuity, um, because most of you are probably entering your candidates for examinations at the end, and you will find that in terms of content, nothing has really changed. The content is the same, uh, the assessment weightings are the same, 20% for the listening, 20% for the reading, and 30% for both of the controlled assessment units writing and speaking. And indeed the assessment modes haven't changed. Um, and again we're exempt from the spelling, punctuation and grammar uh, changes that form a part of the revisions. Okay, the next slide looks at controlled assessments. Okay, no change to controlled assessment. Now I must admit that when people first heard about the intended changes to um, the GCSE and the fact that we will be going linear uh, from first teaching September 2012, uh, I was greeted with um, a variety of different reactions. Some centres were panicking. 
and some had assumptions because they felt that controlled assessments were going to go. Clearly, they have they said to me, uh, because the qualification is going linear, that means an end to controlled assessments. Well, I must confirm the fact uh, that the removal of the controlled assessments is not part of the Department for Educational uh, for Education linear reforms agenda. So very clearly, um, I must state that the controlled assessments are still very much there. They still remain a key feature of the following GCSEs, Chinese, French, German, Italian, Spanish and indeed Urdu. So the controlled assessments are certainly here for now. What is changing, of course, is the, the when, not so much the how or the what. Um, the controlled assessments, as I've stated earlier, don't have to be taken at the end of the course, but obviously they may be. They may be undertaken then if that's what you would like to do. Whatever happens, whenever you undertake the controlled assessments, they can only be submitted once at the end of the course. The results, however, can be uh, resubmitted if a full qualification resit is undertaken as uh, indicated in the third bullet. Okay, got some FAQs that have popped up uh, over the last couple of months so it's probably worth me spending a little bit of time going through some of these. I hope you find these, these useful. And remember, at the end of this session, you'll be able to ask any questions uh, that you've got of your own. Will all controlled assessments be examined now? Well, you'll be aware already that for the controlled assessment for writing, Edexcel already examines the two pieces of written work that you submit from each of your students. So no change there. The controlled assessments will continue to be examined for writing. In terms of the controlled assessment unit uh, for speaking, unit two, this is currently centre marked and Edexcel moderated. Well, as the Department for Education GCSE 2012 linear reforms don't impact on content uh, or the form of assessment, then these will continue to be centre marked and Edexcel moderated. We have certainly not been informed of any change to, uh, to change this, any move to change this. Will the number of controlled assessment opportunities be reduced? No. Uh, again, the format is the same. You, can, you need to ensure that each of your students undertake two controlled assessments for speaking and two controlled assessments for writing. If you wish your students to undertake more than two, then that is fine. And then you would select the best two uh, to submit to Edexcel either for marking in the case of the writing unit uh, or to form part of your sample for moderation in the speaking unit. The third bullet. Will new, control, will new controlled assessments be produced? Well, you're probably aware that new controlled assessments have already been produced back in September 2011 and those controlled assessments are still valid and can be used up to um, summer 2013. Um, you can use these and new ones will be produced after 2013 and you can use those. You can of course, as now, create your own controlled assessment tasks and use those. Uh, you can also look at the 2009-2011 uh, controlled, controlled assessment tasks and use those. But obviously if you are using those, they would need to be refreshed because they would have to be different from the 2009-2011 models. So you would have to change at least one significant bullet. And perhaps the same with the sample assessment materials. You would need to change those significantly if using those. 
If you do have a controlled assessment of your own and would like to run it by one of our team, then that's possible. You, you can do that through the Languages Subject Advisor address that will be given a little bit later on, um, or you can, you can phone up as appropriate. Um, next bullet. If students have sat the uh, GCSE in a modular way, will there be a reset opportunity for them? Well, the last assessment session for the modular or the unitized GCSE will be in 2013, summer 2013. There will not be any individual uh, reset. Uh, unit resits uh, for those students. If they wish to retake the exam, they would have to retake the whole qualification in 2014. Although, as mentioned earlier, they could still include the results from the controlled assessments if they wish to. And obviously they could, could uh, undertake fresh controlled assessments if appropriate. How do these, how do these affect students in year 9 who started on a three-year course in September 2011. Hopefully the message that I've been given is that those students will be doing their assessment in 2014 and that the changes that I'm talking about now will indeed impact on them. How will the reforms affect GCSEs in other languages? Well, uh, I'm pleased to say that we've arranged other sessions for French, German and Spanish. I gave the first of those sessions yesterday. And separate sessions have also been organised for Arabic, Greek, Japanese and Russian. Uh, but generally the overall message is the same, that the assessment or the marking of the assessments is moving to the end of the GCSE course and there will be no individual unit resits possible. Okay, as promised, this next slide you can see is language specific, so it's not quite as, as detailed as the slide we looked at earlier. And essentially the pink blocks refer to the current specification and the green blocks refer to the revised uh, linear GCSE 2012 specification. Uh, probably the most important bit of information there really uh, relates to the, to the final green box and it just indicates that for the new linear qualifications there are only going to be summer series examinations and everything will have to be uh, edXL marked or moderated at the end. They can't do interim units. It will no longer be possible to enter for units in year 10 and then year 11. Okay, in terms of uh, those starting 2000 who started a three-year course in September 2011, they will be affected by the new course. Those who will be starting the course, a GCSE course in September 2012 um, will also uh, be affected by these linear changes. Okay, we are going to support you through the changes, uh, although perhaps quite minimal for most of you, uh, there's going to be a lot of support there as usual. Um, uh, myself and other members of the subject advisor team are there to help you. You can call us on the number that you can see in front of you, uh, but there's also um, the e dedicated email address which is particularly useful. Uh, you, can, you can send an email at any time of the day and then uh, we can look at that and try to get back to you within three working days. There is, of course, the Ask the Expert service, which puts you in direct contact with a senior examiner or moderator, and they again will be able to provide uh, similar support. 
in terms of the controlled assessments for example if you're not quite sure whether a controlled assessment is suitable uh, we can make sure that an examiner has a look at that for you and says yes or no or maybe advises you of some tweaks or some possible improvements so that's something that is available to everyone via this service we will be continuing to keep you informed of any changes and there will be subsequent mailings going out to the senior management team in your school. But do keep an eye out on the languages subject page. You can see the direct link to it there. Uh, there's a lot of information that I placed on that site. Um, there's some information going out very soon, for example, on the, the January results for, for some of the language people who have undertaken uh, January assessments. Uh, but there's all sorts of other articles there. There's, there's an interesting article, for example, called Getting to Grips with Controlled Assessments. And there's, there's a, a whole a raft of support there that you can access. Um, if you don't sign up for my regular um, e-newsletter, again, you can go onto the Languages subject page and at the bottom right-hand corner you can uh, ask uh, to be signed up for that and then you'll automatically get regular bulletins from me. Um, there's a lot of support already on the website. You'll notice uh, that if you go onto the GCSE Chinese or GCSE Italian or GCSE Urdu specific homepage, then click on controlled assessments, you'll see examples of student work, both for writing and um, speaking, that have been marked by examiners, and there's some useful commentaries there, and hopefully that will inf inform um, your teaching and the students' learning. So there's quite a bit of support for you there. Okay, if we look at this next slide, um, you've basically got a summary of all of the key changes uh, that affect the new linear GCSE. What I'd like to do is to have that on screen for a few minutes so that you can um, have a look at those um, because I think they do recap all of the key changes and perhaps use this as an opportunity to type in any questions that you have that relate to this slide or any of the, the slides that I've been showing you earlier today. Um, because really this is the, the last slide, we're moving on now to, to your questions, so 